Alrighty, folks, um, we're going to do a video here on a couple of examples of uh, conservation of momentum. And the first example we're going to do is the ballistic pendulum. Now, um, I apologize, my camera is doing this thing where it goes in and out of focus. And I have no idea why, but I think it's still legible. Um, the, the, I'm going to double up here. I'm going to do the same lecture for the AP class as for the college prep class. And uh, that means a couple things. First of all, it means that for you college preppers, there's going to be some things that I mentioned that might be beyond the scope of what we're doing. I'll try to let you know when that's happening. Also, for you AP people, I'm going to use the notation from the college prep class because I think you guys are more able to handle a change in notation. So the reason why uh, the College Board loves the ballistic pendulum and why it's such a classic example is it uses conservation momentum and conservation of energy in the same problem. Now when you see ballistic pendulum, ballistic makes you think of bullets and guns and yes indeed that's what it was about. Ballistics is any time you throw a projectile, the study of that projectile is called ballistics and um, projectiles are most commonly hurled by uh, rifles and pistols nowadays. Um, in the early days of designing firearms, it was difficult to measure the speed of the bullet because it's freaking invisible and it's freaking lethal and it's um, really hard to do. Nowadays we can uh, use uh, a system of uh, loops of wire and when the metal bullet goes through the loops of wire it generates a little charge and that's a chronograph we could possibly use radar although getting a radar signal to bounce off something as small as a as a bullet and picking up is difficult um, and we can also fire the bullet into some sort of material that traps the bullet so um, that ballistics gelatin that the Mythbusters guys were so intent on using all the time was actually designed to determine uh, penetration depth of bullets and maybe work backwards to the speed but the original system was a pendulum and so I'm gonna draw a big uh, wooden roof rafter here and we're gonna hang from this roof rafter we're gonna hang a very heavy block of wood this block of wood is gonna have a mass capital M to indicate that it's heavy and what we're going to do is we're going to shoot a bullet into that block of wood. Now this bullet has a mass of little m and a velocity v, which is probably pretty, pretty fast. And what's going to happen is we're going to have a collision, and that's the conservation of momentum part. And this bullet is going to embed itself into the block of wood. So I'm going to draw the bullet embedded into the block of wood. And I'm going to remind you that now this thing has a mass of m plus little m. Again, if little m is much less than big M, you could probably ignore it at this stage, but we're going to solve this with symbols to begin with, and, and there's no reason to get rid of it. It's not that hard to deal with. But what's missing from this drawing is now the big block is moving, and so it's going to have a velocity v prime. As a result of its motion, it's going to swing upwards, and the big block is now going to be a bit higher H than it was before. So we're going to use conservation of momentum to solve the collision and conservation of energy to solve for the swinging up to a stop. Now in the regular college prep physics class uh, when something has potential energy we write PE for potential energy. That's a U for those of you who are in the AP class. And when something has kinetic energy we write KE and then of course momentum is always a P so this thing right over here has momentum uh, that's a great looking P I seem to have just put a pool of ink on the page alright let's get started here um, let's do the conservation momentum part first the momentum total beforehand equals the momentum total after the collision beforehand the only object that has momentum is the bullet and the bullets momentum will be little m times little v Afterwards, it's the big block with the bullet embedded in it that has momentum, so that will have a mass of m plus little m and a velocity v prime. Now remember, we're working backwards to try to figure out what the velocity of the bullet is, so I'm going to leave this as it is here, and we'll figure out what to do with it after we work on the conservation of energy. Okay, uh, I was worried about this blue pen being um, uh, very inky, but let's just keep working with it. Um, so what we have here is we have kinetic energy in the middle picture turning into potential energy in the last picture. Now kinetic energy is always one half of the mass, which is big M plus little m, times the velocity squared, in this case V prime squared. And potential energy is the mass, which is big M plus little m, times G times H. Okay, so what connects these two is V prime.
So we could, if we observe h, work out what v prime is, and then put that v prime into this equation and work backwards to, to get v. So I think what we should do is we should solve this equation for v, and we should solve this equation for v prime and do a little substitution. Solving this equation for v is not that hard. v equals big M plus little m all over little m times v prime. Well, let's see if that makes sense. we got a big number over a small number. Uh, that means that this is going to be a very large, let's see, big number over a small number. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a very large number. So a large number times v prime will get you v. Now, v was a large number, so that means that v prime is not going to be a large number. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. I was just reading the equation uh, to make sure I didn't make an algebra mistake. Um, over here, we're going to solve for v prime. Now, that's going to require us, well, first off, we can cancel the m's because the m, the mass of the object is the same both here and here. I should probably have included the little bullet embedded inside the uh, big block. So essentially what we need to do here is we need to, um, well, we need to both multiply both sides by 2, and that'll give us v prime squared equals 2gh. Oh, I've seen this before. Now we need to take a square root, square root of 2gh. And now we're going to substitute that in over here, and we're going to get that the initial velocity of the bullet is the big mass of the block, times the little mass, plus the little mass, excuse me, divided by the little mass, times the square root of 2gh. And this is the equation for a ballistic pendulum. Now, I hope you followed along with that, but let's try some real numbers here. Now, uh, a real number for the mass of a bullet, little m, would probably be 0 0.02 kilograms. That's 20 grams of bullet. And a velocity might be something around the neighborhood of 1,000, oh, whoops, we're going to work out the velocity. Okay, so we're going to work out what the velocity is. Um, now, mass of the big block. I think we should make that uh, 20 kilograms. And I think that the h, the height that the block swings up to, should be about, mm, I don't know, 10 or 15 centimeters, which is equal to 0.15 meters. Okay, putting all that together, the velocity of our bullet is going to be 20 plus 0.02 over 0.02 times the square root of 2 times g. Now in AP class we use a g of 10 and I think some of us have been using 10 in the regular college prep class. Agreed this is 9.8 for those of you who are purists or want to do a very good job but in this case 10 is going to work out just fine and then 0.15. All right we have everything we need to get a calculator on this thing and I have a tendency to work the the square root part out first so 2 no clear the square root of second function square rooty parentheses too many parentheses try this again I'm having a good day it's doubling up my parentheses that's very interesting 2 times 10 times 0.15 and parentheses equals that's 1.73 and now we're going to multiply by this thing and this thing is got 20.02 on the top and 0 0.02 on the bottom. And that gives me a velocity of 1734 meters per second. And that is not a bad velocity. It's a pretty high velocity for a rifle. Um, uh, I, one thing I did is I normally put 10 kilograms here, so maybe that's why we got something that's this big. Um, an AK 47 type rifle shoots uh, at very nearly uh, 100. I'm sorry, 1,000 meters per second. And an uh, AR-15 slash M16 style raffle shoots ah, much faster than that. Not quite this high. So maybe this is some sort of, um, you know, earlier World War II style rifle that shoots a pretty heavy bullet at a pretty high velocity, but you can't carry very many bullets with you. This is the ballistic pendulum. All right, there is a collision that causes something to move, and that something moving goes up, and we can work backwards to find out some thing that was very difficult to figure out uh, before the invention of some modern technology.